so we'll go ahead and get started today. Um, Emily couldn't be with us today, um, so um, we'll miss her, so send her positive thoughts. Um, but I, I saw something that actually my great friend here in the clinic posted on Facebook um, last night, and it was just a good, great reminder that, you know, our diet is not just what we take in when we eat. You know, it's not just our, our nutrition, but it's also what we listen to, what we are around, um, and that's, you know, the people we're around, the music we listen to, our environment. Um, so our diet is many things. So maybe today be mindful of those things. You know, you've already started right now doing something good for you, and that's just for you. And that's important. So maybe consider as you go into this time that's for you, what your diet is. What is it that you are allowing to come in and not just to come in, but to influence your life? So let's go to that quiet time, that time where we can listen, that time where there's no judgment, no competition, that time that's just for us. Come to that time and start with the breath. Focus on your breath. Always start with the breath and allow the breath to be the vehicle that takes you inward. It helps you to listen, to be aware, to understand, and to appreciate. Begin to notice how you feel physically. How you feel mentally. What are you thinking? How you feel emotionally. What are your emotions, your feelings today? And how do you feel spiritually? What is it? that's influencing you today, that's, that's creating whatever mood, whatever feeling that you have today. Always remember that what you can embrace, you can erase. But what you resist will persist. Remember that through your practice. Embrace today, embrace the moment good or bad, feel the feelings, think the thoughts, be aware, and then be able to let go of what you don't need. Take a deep cleansing breath in and let go of that breath. Again, a good deep breath in, feel the abdomen expand, the body fills and then release that breath. Feel the abdomen retract back. The body releases. The mind releases. The heart releases. Once more, good cleansing. Deep breath in, taking in good health, strength, peace, love, contentment. And then letting go. Let go of worry, resentment, bitterness fear, and anxiety. 
Take a good deep breath in, and as you do, allow the chin to climb to the ceiling. Feel the stretch in the neck as the anterior portion of the neck opens and breathes. Feel the weight of the head increasing the stretch, opening the throat more and more. Take another deep breath in as you breathe out. Allow the chin to float down to the chest. Remember this bend is just through the neck. So you feel the stretch through the back, the posterior portion of the neck, as the weight of the head now falling forward gently allows the neck to stretch, the shoulders to drop and relax. Then start to allow the chin to float across the chest from side to side back and forth, maybe staying right here, maybe just moving back and forth in this half moon sway, but maybe coming full circle. And let this be a reminder that throughout your practice, do what is comfortable for you. If I'm doing something that doesn't feel good to your body, it's gonna let you know and listen to it. Modify as needed. So challenge yourself if you feel the need to be challenged. Be easy on yourself if you feel the need to go easy today. Nice. As the chin rolls over the right collarbone, let it reside there. Let me remind um, everyone too on Teams, if you're not muted, to go ahead and mute yourself just so we don't um, hear things in your environment. Lift the chin up as if gazing over to the right of the room. And this, can, again, can be a gentle t twist. Maybe I'm bringing my chin just, just towards the shoulder. Maybe I'm over the shoulder. Maybe I'm looking up and over at the moon as if gazing at the moon. And then gently allow the chin to swing down and over top of the left collarbone. Pull the chin closer and closer to the chest as the right shoulder draws down. Feeling that stretch down the right side of the neck. Breathe. Remember to stay connected through your breath. Your breath will help you flow from one asana or posture to the other. Lift the chin up as if gazing over to the left side of the room now. Remember, this can be gentle or it can be a little more increased. Maybe I'm looking up and over. Nice. Now bring the left ear towards the left shoulder. Remember, this is ear to shoulder, so I'm not straining through the shoulder at all. In fact, my shoulders relax. The stretch is through the neck, and that's being provided by the weight of the head, ear to shoulder. I can even take my right fingertips and stretch them out over to the right, pressing down through the third finger, lengthening through the arm, through the neck. Breathe. Bring the right arm in, lift through the head, allow the right ear now to drop to the right shoulder. Maybe the left arm now extends out to the left, fingertips pressing into the mat. So that resistance as you're pressing one way and pressing the other, and you feel that in the center. So the neck here being the focal point, the center point, getting that great long stretch, elongating through the muscle. Remember to pay attention to tension. So here I wanna think about the rest of my body. Do I have my knees drawing up? Do they have tension in the knees or the hips? Is my face holding an expression that causes tension. So remember, this entire practice is to be aware of your body and how you feel and what you're doing. Okay, release the head back now. Bring your hands to heart center. Open the fingers as wide as you can. So make a, a big space between the thumb and the pinky here. Nice, stretch the arms out, lengthening through the arms here. Keeping the body long and tall, let the stretch be from the shoulder out. Again, pay attention to elsewhere, so no tension in my knees here. 
and then I bring the arms open. Palms are forward first, thumbs are up, pinkies pressed towards the floor. Nice stretch of the hand. We don't think about stretching through the hand, but it's important as well. Now turn the arms so the palms of the hand are facing behind you. Now I'm going to turn so you can see. Now I want you to take your left hand and bring it back behind you and your right arm up skyward and then bend through your right arm. Now maybe I'm able to clasp the fingers and press one against the other. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I need to tug on to a sock or my shirt. But we're stretching through the tricep on the right arm and up the bicep of the left arm. So a great stretch in the arms here. Be mindful again of your legs and your knees. So don't hold tension somewhere that you don't need to. Nice, now lift up, come back to the center, palms to the front, open the fingers wide, palms to the back, rotating here. Feel the collarbones, how they clenched a little bit when just by turning so it's always those slight, mo slight movements that make a big difference. Now the same, I bring my, but the opposite side, my right arm under my left arm up now, and I bend through my left elbow now, and again, one side may be better than the other, so maybe this was very easy to do on one side and the opposite side maybe not so much. All that means is one side was really easy and one side wasn't, so there's no perfect practice here. You're learning your body, so maybe you learn that your dominant side is much more flexible or maybe the opposite. Nice. Release back out. Bring the arms back behind you. Open up through your chest. Such a great thing to do. We want to discourage that normal aging process. We call that kyphosis as you round through the back and kind of hunch forward. So we want to keep these muscles strong in the chest. So I'm going to draw my shoulders back, shoulder blades reach towards one another, open up the chest here. Such a great thing, especially for people who have lung issues or asthma, opening up those chest muscles and allowing that surface area to expand that space that the lungs really need to just take in good deep breaths. And then come forward, round through the back. So now the opposite, just like a scared cat, arching through the back. My core is tight, my back is rounded and allows all the muscles of the back to really stretch here. My head drops and relaxes. And then it comes into a flow. Inhale, cow. Big open chest. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. One more. Seated cow. Inhale. And exhale. Nice. Bring your hands to heart center. Set your intention. What is your diet? Not just your food diet, your mental diet, your emotional diet, your spiritual diet. As we go through our practice, let's consider that. What do we take in? What do we allow to influence us? Come to your table position. So my hands are under my shoulders, my knees are underneath my hips. And I'm gonna lift through my heart here, now with my cow in a much different way. So on our hands and knees, lifting through the heart. Remember, you don't have to strain through your head and neck. That's not what this is about. This is stretching the trunk of the body. So I'm lifting through my heart. I can gently look up, but if I have my gaze to the mat, I can do the same thing, because it's my heart that's lifting, my chest that's lifting. So I feel the stretch from my navel all the way up to the throat here. And then the opposite, round through the back and pull the back up as high as you can. Tight core, navel drawn up into the spine, head relaxes, weight is into the hands and the knees. Breathe. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. One last time. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Nice. Release down into your child's pose, Belasana. So child's pose, my hands and fingers are nice and wide. My thumbs are looking towards one another. The palms are planted into the mat and I'm drawing the rest of the body back and I feel that stretch go down the back, wrap around the gluteus as my sit bones 
press back behind me, Belasana, child's pose. It's a place we honor the body. So remember, you can always come here. You don't need me to, to guide you here. Come here whenever you need a rest. Okay, come on back up. Now I want you to take your left knee and bring it in a tad and extend through the right leg. Now it's as if you never lifted your leg, remember, because if we lean, then you're compromising. You don't want to do that. You want to stay equal on your hands, equal weight right underneath the shoulders, and you don't want to turn the hip out. So keep that hip bone focused to the mat. So my toenail is focused to the mat. I'm not turning the leg out. And this may be enough for many right here to balance. If you're working on balance, you can always curl through your toes on the side that the leg is down. If your head and neck is flat, there's no strain there. If you can, Lengthen through the left arm, coming into your tiger pose. So it's a nice straight line from my left fingers all the way down my body, down to my right toes. Tiger. Very much a balance pose, obviously. A strengthening pose. You're really using your core. You're working against body weight. Breathe. Maybe rotate here through the ankles, through the wrists. Remember, if you have wrist issues, when we do things like this that make us call on our wrists, you can always make a fist if that's better for you. All right, nice. Now come on down. Come to your child's pose. Breathe. Take a good deep breath in and out. Breathe. What does your diet consist of? Your mental diet. Your emotional diet. What influences you in your environment? Come on back up, same thing on the opposite side. So now it's my right knee that comes in just a tad, my left leg lifts, and my core immediately tightens. Again, I'm trying not to lean, so I'm really using my core here. I'm pressing into my hands, they're right underneath my shoulders. Maybe I stay right here. Maybe I can lift up on my right arm and extend the right arm out. Head and neck relaxed. Tiger. And this is good because we are fatiguing the muscle, right? We're putting, we're using our weight to really press into and make those muscles tighten, contract, and break down. And then we go rest and they build up. So we're building strength. We're also building flexibility as we stretch here. And we're practicing balance. And release. Nice. Find your child's pose. Take a breath in and out. Now as you come out of child's pose, I want you to think of scooping up with the chest. So bend through the elbows and come forward and scoop up with the chest coming into your king cobra. When you come into your king cobra, make sure you squeeze your gluteus muscles. So doing that will help you not hyperextend, not extend too much back here. So I want the weight of the body to just kind of sink to the floor, allowing the legs to rest on the floor. Obviously I'm pressing into the hands. Again, if this bothers your wrist, make a fist. But your king cobra is such a great stretch of the chest, but really strengthening those back muscles as well. And then if I curl through my toes and lift the legs up, I come to my plank. Now my core really has to take over and tighten. If full plank is ever too much for me, I can set my knees down, crisscross through my ankles. So remember, do what's right for you. From my plank, I want to lift into my first downward facing dog of the day, Auto Mukha. Shwanasana. So my downward facing dog, my hands are under my shoulders, my feet are my hip width apart, and I'm pressing my heels down. And my shoulders are, don't have any tension, but they're not so relaxed that I'm sinking in them. I want to have a nice long arm here. So the lift is through the hips, and the pressing is into the hands and through the heels. So I'm pressing the heels down whether they make it down to the floor or not. Downward facing dog. Nice. Flow forward, plank. Lift, king cobra. Squeeze through the gluteus. Come back, plank. And lift. 
down dog. Let's do that again. Come forward, plank, nice tight plank. Lift, King Cobra. Come back, plank. And lift, down dog. Nice, now walk the hands back to the feet. You're in your forward fold, Utsanasana. And you fold it from the crease of your legs. So your upper body weight is allowing you to really stretch through the lower body. You feel that, wrapping around the gluteus, running down the leg, you're pressing into the feet, especially the heels. If you want to deepen this stretch, pick up your left foot and put it behind your right and really press into the heel of that left foot. And you're pressing your chest towards your upper thigh, whether it makes it there or not, it doesn't matter. Remember, this is not a perfect practice. There's nothing perfect about it. You just wanna do what feels good for you today. This is a great hamstring stretch. From here, I wanna take that left leg that I put behind the right foot and lift it up skyward. Doesn't matter how high, I'm just lifting it up trying to increase the flexibility from one leg to the other. Again, my chest press into the upper thigh. My head is relaxed. This is your standing split. Nice. Release back down to neutral, marrying it to the right foot. Now, if you have issues with your head being down, if you get dizzy or you don't like your head being beneath your heart, you can always come up and rest for a moment and come back. Otherwise, it is very much a benefit to you to allow that blood flow to get to the brain. Take the right foot, if you wish, behind the left. Press through the right heel here. Core is tight. Chest relaxes down to upper thigh. Breathe. Nice. Same thing. Now I'm lifting my right leg up to my standing split and again it doesn't matter how high that comes just do what feels good try to lengthen if you can through that back leg allowing that chest to float a little deeper to the upper thigh if you can standing split every chance you get try to rotate through your joints so here I can rotate through the ankle nice release that right leg down beside the left Uttanasana, forward fold. If you need to stretch through the feet here, the great way is to lift one heel and then the other, really allowing that foot to get a great stretch. You can feel that in all areas of the foot. We put such a turmoil on our feet every day and don't think about it, but they need exercise and stretching as well. Nice, a slow reverse swan dive brings me up. And hands marry at heart center. What's your diet? What comes to mind when you think about all the things that you take in during your day? Maybe just this week, maybe just today. What have you been around? What is influencing your mood? What is your mood? Come with me into a flow. A deep breath, inhale up. Exhale down, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhaling your hands to your shins, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale your hands back down. Inhale your left foot back and your right into your downward facing dog. Exhaling, flow forward, plank. Inhaling, lift, King Cobra. Exhale, come back, plank. Inhale, lift. Down dog. Exhaling, walk the feet forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, your slow reverse swan dive. Exhale, your hands to heart center. What is it you're thinking about today? What is it that your mind is calling on you to pay attention to? Let's do that flow one more time and always remember this flow you can put to a poem, a Bible verse, um, a mantra. I'll just use uh, a Bible verse just 
because this is what I do, but you can do it to anything, a poem, anything, but I'll show you. You can inhale up, be still. Exhale down and no. Inhale your hands to your shins, that I. Exhale down and God. Inhale down dog, be still. Exhale, flow forward and no. Inhale, lift up, that I. Exhale, back to plank, I'm God. Inhale, be still. Exhale, forward, and no. Inhale, that I. Exhale, I'm God. So you see, that just happens to be my favorite Bible verse, and so I utilize that, but you can use a poem, a mantra, um, positive words, affirmations, whatever it is you need. So bring your feet hip width apart, maybe a little more than hip width apart if you can. And go ahead and press the buttocks down. We're coming into our squat. We keep our knees on top of our feet, always. So we always want to have good alignment. When you think of joint on top of joint, you're usually, you know, you're going to be in good alignment. And then you're not compromising. Here, if I'm leaning forward to where my knees jet out past my foot, there's too much pressure on the kneecap, on the shin. So I want to think of pressing into the buttocks and pressing into the heels. Nice. Now, again, we're working against body weight by hovering. I want to be really so pressing into those heels that I almost fall back. So if you're almost feeling like you're going to fall back, you're doing great. Obviously, you don't want to fall, but I mean, you really want to have the weight pushed back. If you need to, though, you can put your hands into your legs. If you can, I want you to step out with your left foot, keeping into your squat. So step into a squat, stay here, step to the outside, a wide squat, and step back. So I'm not leaving my squat, I'm just moving my legs. Step, then a little deeper, step, then a little deeper, step, then a little deeper, step back, then a little deeper. Keep going to the side, to the front, to the side, to the back. Once more, side, Keeping my alignment, front, side, and back. Nice, come back to the center and hold. Now always, if you need to come up and take a little rest and come out of your squat and come back, do that. Opposite side now, I'm gonna take my right leg if I can and step forward. So I step and I stay in my squat. Come to the side, a wide squat, to the back. The side. I'm always thinking about pressing back and down with the buttocks. Step, 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 and side. So obviously we're pretty much staying in a squat. We're just utilizing some movement, but staying in the squat is helping you fatigue these quadricep muscles and strengthen them and build muscle. And back. One more set. Front, side, back, and here. Nice job. Bring those legs a little closer together. Nice. I want to step forward now with my left foot. Big step. Big enough step that I have knee on top of foot. Drop the back knee. Lengthen through the leg. Lean forward over that knee. Feel the weight, feel the pressure into that left leg. Knee still on top of foot. Now drop the back knee down. Nice. Now come out to the side with that left leg. Lift, place, side lunge. Left knee still on top of left foot. I can rest on my leg. I can hover. I can touch down with my right hand. Your choice. Now bring that left foot behind you, left and back. Flex and lengthen through the right foot. So the weight's in my left foot. There's no weight on that right heel. You just gently have it on the floor. Let's do all that one more time. Big step with the left foot. Lift and place, bend. 
drop that back knee. Now lengthen through the back leg, hover. Feel the difference, just that slight movement. Feel the difference in the gluteus and the core tightens. Now drop the back knee. Now you feel more in that quad. Now this core, uh, this gluteus tightens. Out to the side, left foot out, left, out, bend, breathe. So here, we're fatiguing this good um, left quadricep muscle, but think of the stretch. Feel the great stretch that you're providing in this adductor, your inner thigh on your right leg. So a lot going on here. Bring the left foot back, lift and place. Same thing here, weight in my right foot, fatiguing the quad, core is tight. The good stretch of the hamstring as I flex through the toes and bring them up to my face, lengthening through that leg. Now come back to center. You should feel that leg, you should notice. Now we move to the opposite side. Your right leg comes up and out. Step and bend. Drop the back knee. So see, I'm calling these things out to you because as you practice, whether it's with me or at home or with someone else, you wanna make sure that this practice is what it truly is. It's awareness of this great body that you have and the things you can do, the things you can't do, accepting both. Lengthen through the back leg, hover, push into that foot. So I want you to notice things. I want you to notice how you feel when you move. The more you practice that here, the more you'll practice it outside. And the more you're aware of what you're holding tense and how you're holding something, drop that back knee back, then the more you can be aware of when something doesn't feel good or when you're doing something that's not good for your body. So the more you're aware of that, the less you're gonna injure yourself. Right leg comes out to the side, lift, bend. Remember, weight into the right foot, lengthen through the left leg. I can rest my arm here, I can hover or I can touch down with the left arm. Core is tight, head and necks relax. So it's a check-in constantly. You're just checking and assessing how you feel, what you're doing, how it's making you feel. Right foot behind you, all the weight into the right, Lengthen through the left, flex those toes, or make sure all the weight's back. You don't want any pressure on that heel. You only get two of them, and they're hard to fix when you do something to hurt them. Nice, step forward, big step. Right foot, step, bend, drop the back leg. Now, as I lengthen through the back leg and hover, again, a big change in how I feel. My core takes over because I'm hovering. Whenever you hover, your core is working. Whenever you work against body weight, your core is working. Right foot out to the right, lift and place. That's why it's so important to have such a great, strong core, front and back. You have core muscles, obviously, in your back. So it's very important because those core muscles are your foundation. They help you do so much. Right leg behind the left, flex, tight core, Weight in the back, flex those toes, head relaxed. And back. Nice, come on up. Should feel those legs and those quadriceps now. Let's move into sun salutations. Take a breath. As we say, ground, come to your mountain pose. So a good standing, good posture, equal weight on your feet. Hands just relaxed at your side, palms forward, shoulders lifted up, back, down. Relaxed, but the chest is open. Breathe, maybe close the eyes here. Just ground. What is your diet? What are you taking in? What's creating your mood or your day? Take a deep breath in and out. Embrace and embrace. Don't resist or it will persist. Take a deep breath in as you bring those arms skyward and swan dive down. Uttanasana. Bring your hands to your shins. Ardha Uttanasana. Tight core, long back. Ease back down, forward fold. Uttanasana. Your right knee now comes up and your right leg extends out. Go ahead and relax that back knee down. And remember, we're always trying to use muscle and not momentum. So if at all possible, pick up your hands first and push from your foot. If 
you need to put them on your leg and help push yourself up, you can. But try to use muscle to come up. And you're coming up nice and slow. And as soon as you come up, you notice, what am I using to stay in this position? Well, my gluteus is tight, my core is tight, I'm pushing weight into that front foot. I'm lifting through my heart, my hands come to heart center. So you see, it's a pulse check of the body. You're assessing, you're getting to know what you use when you move a certain way or another. And now maybe I can rotate to the left, hands still at heart center. And remember, movement plays a big difference with balance. So if you're working on balance and it's not so good yet, remember, kickstand through those back toes. If you've been working on it and it's better and you want to challenge it, curl through your back toes and come on up. Breathe. Ease the body back. And maybe stay here, maybe drop the back leg down again if you need, but if you can, bring the arms behind you and hover. Remember, hovering makes us use our core. Our head and neck is relaxed. My weight is really pushing into that foot. My knee is right on top of my foot. Ease the arms down underneath the shoulders. Bring the left foot back. Downward facing dog, Adho Svanasana. Flow forward to a full plank or half. And either one, bend the elbows and ease down, Chaturanga. Lift, King Cobra. Ease back down, Baby Cobra. Bujang Asana. Nice. If you can, bend through your right knee. Reach the left arm back and grab onto that right foot and press one against the other as you open up the chest but stretch the quad. Head and neck relax. In fact, I'm looking down. This is your cross leg bow pose. Nice. Extend that leg out to the right, the arm out to the left, your half Superman. Really making you use your core and your back. If you have back issues and this bothers you, do not do it. Nice. Come back to baby cobra. Remember to let go of ego. So even if you're there by yourself, especially if you're there by yourself, who are you trying to impress? Why hurt? Why hurt? That old adage of no pain, no gain is just crazy that we all listen to. Because why hurt? That's your body's way of telling you something's wrong. Bend through your left knee. Reach back with your right arm. If you can't grab it, just reach for it. If you can, Pull against the foot and press away at the same time, creating that resistance, deepening that stretch. Be mindful where you're holding tension. Is your head cocked back so it's really got too much tension in it? You don't want to feel that tomorrow. Keep your head relaxed. Little to no weight in my left hand beside my left shoulder. Heart lifted. Core tight. Breathe. And release into your half Superman, maybe. Left leg out to the left in the back, right arm out to the right in the front. Maybe rotate here through some wrist and ankle. Remember, every chance you can, motion is lotion. Draw back, baby cobra. Push up into your king cobra. Squeeze through that gluteus. Remember, you can always challenge when we're in King Cobra coming to up dog. If you lift the legs on the floor and just balance on the top of your feet and then curl through your toes and come up, down dog. Now it's your right leg that comes skyward, the right knee comes in, the right foot steps forward. Lift and place. If I can't step into right alignment, I wanna fix it once I get there. Set the back leg down. Remember, we talked about muscle, not momentum. So I'm pushing into the foot. I lift up the hands to keep me from launching off the hands. And I want to push from the foot, which makes me utilize all the muscles in the leg from the gluteus down. And again, I become aware of what it is I'm using to stay balanced here. 
Maybe I bring my hands to heart center. Maybe I gently start to twist. So obviously, motion making a difference, but also your vision. Because when you twist like this, your vision obviously is moving and coming to the side as well. And vision plays a huge part in balance. Maybe I stay right here. Maybe I curl through the toes and push from the ball of the foot. Breathe. Notice how much strength and the muscles it takes to be still in a posture. back slowly maybe bringing the arms behind you maybe hovering and remember you can clasp onto the fingers that's a little easier if you let go and just hover believe it or not that makes a big difference if you need to though you can rest your arms on your leg core should be tight though head and neck should be relaxed release the arms down step the left foot to Mary the right uttanasana forward fold your slow reverse swan dive in your hands mary at heart center what is in your diet have you thought about that before have you thought about how the things around you the people around you the food you eat the music you listen to the shows on tv that you watch how they affect you good or bad take a deep breath in Lift up, swan dive down, uttanasana, tight core, long back, chest presses to upper thigh. Hands come to the shins, ardha uttanasana, long back, tight core, crown of the head pressing forward, gluteus maximus pressing away from you. Hands travel back downward. Now it's your left knee that comes up into the chest, your left leg extends behind you. Nice. And I want you to spin through your back foot and then take your right hand to the inside of the right foot and your left arm up and around, resting on your back. Maybe this is good staying right here. Maybe you need to pick up that right hand and rest it on your leg. Maybe you can raise the left arm into your extended side angle. So try, just try different ways and what doesn't feel good, move out. What does, stay in extended side angle. So I'm pressing the out, outer portion of my left foot down so that I can stretch up the ankle and into the leg. I'm pressing into my right foot. I'm relaxing through my head and neck. I don't need tension there. My core is tight. To move into my triangle, all I need to do is lengthen through that right front leg. So I stretch and I feel that great stretch up the adductor, the inner thigh. Breathe. Now this should be very freeing, you know, like you're suspended from your top hand from the ceiling, just hanging in this position. Should feel very good. If it doesn't, modify. Maybe you need to pick up your arm and rest it on your leg. Maybe you shouldn't be down so far. Trick asana, triangle. Ease that left arm down slowly. As you come down slowly, before you turn the rest of the body, feel that stretch in the back. Then bend through the knee, then replace the hands under the shoulders. Marry the right foot to the left. Downward facing dog, Auto Mukha Shwanasana. Nice. Come to your plank, maybe stay right here. Maybe you need to challenge, pick up that right leg, your one-legged plank. Maybe you want to bend that right knee and bring it over to your left elbow. Maybe you need to set that on the floor and just keep that core tight, pressing into the hands, but maybe you can hold it. Drive it back to your plank, lift back to your down dog, stretch. Go ahead and walk your dog while you're here. Again, such a great way to exercise through the toes as I roll through the foot, just tapping the top of the foot and then pressing down through the heel. Nice. Flow forward, plank, lift, king cobra. Ease down, baby cobra. Lift back up, plank, into your down dog. Nice. Come to your plank now. 
Maybe I stay right here. Maybe I lift the right, the left leg. Maybe this is where I stay. Maybe I drive the left knee to the right elbow. Maybe I need to settle it down. Again, this is your practice. I'm just giving you ideas. Drive that right leg back, plank, and lift, downward facing dog. From your down dog now, take your left leg up, lift your left knee and bend it, step forward, lift and place. Find your form, knee on top of foot. Spin through your back foot. So you spin through your right leg this time and you bring the left arm to the inside of the left leg and you bring your right hand either up to your hip or if you wish, you can bring it skyward. So see, you see here, you're opening up through the chest. You're still bent through that front knee. You're still putting pressure into that left foot. You're pressing the outer portion of the right foot down so that you feel that stretch up the leg. Remember, I can pick up my left arm if I need. This is your extended side angle. To move into your triangle, you're just lengthening through the leg and I can always pick up that arm if I need to and rest it if it doesn't feel good being too far down. Relax through the head and neck, slowly allow that right arm to come down, feel the stretch in the back, especially the closer it gets down to the opposite hand. Breathe. And the left hand comes to the outside of the left foot and I come back to my lunge and I step forward, lift and place. Your slow reverse swan drive brings you up, your hands marry at heart center. What are you thinking about? What has influenced your mood today? What is your mood? You know, back a long time ago, we used to have those mood rings that we would wear and it would tell us our mood. We didn't really need that. We just need to check in and ask ourselves, what are you thinking? How do you feel today? And you have the ability to change your mood and you have the ability to turn off the TV or music or even someone that is creating a bad mood or a negative environment. So hopefully you will make that choice to do that. If it's something negative, move on, let go. Come to your mountain pose once again. Palms of your hands forward. Take a deep breath and out. Working on balance. So I lift up my left foot. You know, I feel um, prompted to say, and I don't think I've ever done this in one of my yoga classes, but what I just said, you know, if you have something negative around and you have the choice, if you have something going on and you don't feel like you have the ability to get out of a negative atmosphere fear, or a negative environment, please ask for help. Here at NASA Langley, we have our EAP program. Go ahead and lift your knee here and hold. So please utilize that. It is not a weakness to have to talk to someone or to need to talk to someone or to reach out. So don't stay in a negative atmosphere. Don't stay somewhere where you're being hurt, physically, mentally, or emotionally, or spiritually. You know, if you feel like you need a change and something is not right and you need someone to talk to, please reach, a, reach out, 1-800-950-3434. Okay, extend that leg out, lengthen through that leg. Now we've been doing subtle, pretty easy movements but we've been standing on this leg. We have been challenging the strength, the muscles in this leg. I want you to bring that leg back slowly. And as you do, keep it straight and bend forward, but try not to lean to the right. So try to keep that hip bone focused to the ground, the toenail focused to the ground, your face focused to the ground. So nothing is being compromised. You're in your warrior three. And from here, you can move on with your arms coming out, if that's good, or behind, whichever way is best for you. Virabhandrasana three, warrior three. Now to challenge here would be to come down to the floor with your hands and lift through the leg. We've been here before already today and you're standing split. And then a huge challenge is to lift back up into your warrior three. 
Nice, lift all the way up and hands to heart center. So see, you're working against body weight and that's a huge challenge. And if you need to hold on to something until you can work you know, towards that, but it's a great way to, to strengthen those muscles. Same thing on the opposite side. Pick up the right leg. Now again, you know, those things that I said were kind of simple, they might not be kind of simple for you. So if this is enough, do this. This is practicing balance. This is training the mind to understand that standing on one foot can be as normal as standing on two. That's what it's all about, practice. Lift the knee and hold. As we do this, even these balance practice moves, we think about what we're using. So here, when I lifted my knee, I tightened through my core. I didn't fold forward, I'm staying up long through the torso, tight through the core, flex through the foot, lifting through the knee. Then I extend the leg out, pressing through the heel. Breathe. Again, draw the leg back, slow and controlled. Use muscle, not momentum. Slowly coming down, slower the better, to your warrior three. Arms out or arms back. You wanna be flat on your foot. If you can't bring the leg all the way parallel to the floor, don't do it. If you need to keep the toes to the floor, do that. If you wanna stay here, do so. If you wanna challenge, ease down slowly. Hands to floor, leg lifts, standing split. Head relaxes, chest presses to upper thigh. And remember that challenge move to lift back up without putting your foot down, which is very hard to do because you're working against body weight. So it is a challenge for some. And then lifting all the way up before you set that foot down. Again, strengthening that leg, um, challenging those muscles. Come to the top of your mat. I wish we had three or four hours, but we don't. Bring the arms skyward, swan dive down, Uttanasana. Nice, bend through the knees, press into the feet, push the buttocks back and down. Now, for me, this is very comfortable. I could stay here all day. For others, you might need to come up onto your, the balls of your feet, or you need to put your hands back. If you can, allow your knees to flow out to either side trying to keep your feet as flat on the floor as you can. Bring your elbows to the inside of your knees and then push gently against your inner knee with your elbows, bringing your hands to heart center. This is a great hip um, exercise, really helps to open up the hips. Your core is tight. Try to lift the heart as much as you can, but don't feel any strain, of course. And then bring the arms back out Release the hands back, walk your way to the center of the mat, and ease the buttocks down. Try to push it as close to the feet as you can. Come down to your forearms and lift through your right leg. Flexing through the foot, draw your navel in, and then bend the knee. Bring the knee close to the nose or to the face, and then extend the leg out, stretch. If you can, push into the left foot and hold. So you're on your forearms, you're lengthening through your leg, lift the leg back up, bring the knee back in. Again, if you need to set the buttocks down, you can. Extend, lift, bend, and extend. Nice, lift, place the foot back. Rest if you need to. Moving to the opposite side now. So maybe I extend the leg, maybe I stay here. Maybe I can lift the buttocks up off the floor. On my forearms, lifted, bent, extend, lift, bend, Drive that navel to the spine, nice tight core. Lift, bend, and extend. Nice, lift back and bring that knee in and then set that foot down. Great, release the upper body down. Relax through those arms that you've worked. Bring them up above the head if you can. 
and release the legs out in front of you. Your full body stretch. Breathe. This should feel good. Bend through your right knee. Grab onto it with your left arm and guide the right knee over to the left as your gaze comes to the right, coming into your half spinal twist here. Remember, your knee comes over as far as feels comfortable. So if this bothers your back, don't come so far. But this is great if you can to really stretch through this and open up the spine, the vertebra here, but also to manipulate those inner organs. You're helping to promote digestion, great digestion with movement, motility, which the digestive system needs. All right, tighten your core as you lift that leg up, release that leg down. Now it's a bend through the left leg, grabbing onto it with the right arm, guiding it over to the right, gaze comes to the left. Ardhamaksandrasana, your half spinal twist. We usually do this at the beginning. I don't think we did that today, but we're at same thing. It's just that you're lying down. But you just always wanna be careful when you come out of a twist from lying down to use your core, your abdominal muscles. Don't strain your back, tighten your core, then lift your leg and bring it back. Go ahead and bring those knees in, give them a hug, hopefully not your last hug today. I don't know about you guys, but during this pandemic, I think that's one of the things I've missed the most is seeing you all and giving hugs. I'll be glad when we can get back together once again. Nice, relax one leg down and the other. Find Shavasana, Yoga Nidra. This is your time to just relax. Deep relaxation, time of meditation, time to think about what is your diet? What are you taking in? What are you feeling? What is your mood? What do you need to let go of? Start to come back to awareness of your body, of your breath, of things that you put aside, your heart rate, your heart beating in your chest, your eyes blinking, the sounds around you. All these things we take for granted. Bring movement back into the body. Wiggle, turn, bend, move, whatever the body calls on you to move. Allow it to do it. And then when you're ready, turn on to one side or the other. Take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, push with the opposite arm and come up to that seated position where we all started just a little while ago. Bring your hands to heart center. Think about your diet. As you leave this place, think about the things you're taking in and how they're affecting you. And then take that a step further. Think about how you might be affecting others. Jai Shri Satguru Maharaj Ki, may the light of truth overcome all darkness. So I hope you move from this place in light. I hope you have peace, joy, light, and love everywhere you go. Namaste. Thank you so much, guys, for being with me today. I hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.